What's going on beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy Blue and what you are looking at right now is Air Hauler 2 now available for X-Plane 11. So if you're like me and you're someone who loves flight sims and tycoon type games, I think you'll enjoy this. Today we're going to start a fresh new air transport company. So I'm going to click here and click new company. It's going to ask me for the path to my X-Plane 11, which is right here. I'm going to hit open. Next. And now for my company name. So I already have a company. I'm just going to do this one just for the video. So I'm going to name it Blue Arrow Connection. And my pilot name is going to be Blue Griffin. And I don't know why it asks you your name twice, but uh, it's just going to be Blue Griffin twice. And we hit next. Now it's gonna ask you for the difficulty. Now, let me give you a tip here. I personally would not choose anything lower than hard. And the reason why is because at hard, you get $250,000, 40% reputation, and a Cessna 172, which you can actually immediately sell for $239,000. Which gives you close to a half a million dollars to start the game. Now money is not the biggest issue, the issue is the reputation. You cannot lease an aircraft or take out a loan until your reputation gets to 40%. So unless you want to play this non-stop and really grind it out at the lower ranks, even if you really enjoy GA, I would still recommend starting at hard. Take my advice, enter at your own risk. But for us today, we're going to be starting at easy pass. No shame in that. So we're going to get $2 million, 60% reputation and a passenger config 737, which I am gonna immediately sell uh, for $31 million. It's gonna give us around 33 million-ish dollars of starting cash. And the reason I'm starting it easy is because I honestly don't know how much time I can invest into this company. And I wanna start at the regional airline level. And you'll see once we get into the aircraft prices and things like that. So let's go ahead and move on. We'll hit next. Now we'll choose our base of operations. So I am gonna start in San Diego. I'm gonna click on this screen and just drag until I get all the way to San Diego. Now I do wanna mention another tip for you guys as you begin. You wanna choose an airport that uh, has good fuel prices and not too high landing fees. That'll give you, if, as you click on it, you'll see right here, landing fee 576, um, all the way up to 2,304. Um, and then the fuel is 478 up to 569 for Jet A. So if I click on another airport like LAX or something like that, here's LAX. Um, it'll cost you 6,000. That's the that's the bottom. That's the minimum 6,000 landing fee, and up to 26,000 probably for bigger airliners. 100 LL is 100 uh, is 579, and uh, Jet A is six. So again, kind of pay attention to that. There may be you know a big air you want to fly in. But uh, I still recommend just maybe picking a, a little bit of a smaller airport next to it, especially if you're doing like career or hard. If you're doing easy, it's not as big of a deal because you start with more um, more money to spend in the beginning. So we're going to choose San Diego. This feels like a, a good uh, economical decision for us as we want to spend money in other places. It might even open up a second base of operation. So next. Now the cargo job creation options. This only applies to cargo jobs. This does not apply to passenger jobs. Job volume, I believe, is the amount of cargo jobs that will spawn. Uh, distance is the, dis the distance of each cargo job. I'm gonna turn mine down because I usually like to do flights between like 30 and an hour and a half. Um, that's usually as much time as I have to do flights. Size is, I believe, the amount of cargo in each job. So if you want really heavy jobs, then having your size up is probably good. Uh, I'm going to turn mine down because I want to make sure that I can fit, you know, like when my starter aircraft, I'm not going to be able to fit a ton of uh, cargo in them. So I'm going to turn the size down a bit. Internal jobs, that is only like from base to base. Right now we only have one base, San Diego, but if, if I were to open up San Francisco, then I would probably want this higher. So I want more jobs going between my bases and I can set a few AI pilots to fly in between and just have that as constant residual income coming in. Next up, we got airport size. This is the airport size of the airports that you're going to uh, or the jobs that are being created. So I'm gonna turn that up because again, we're doing, we're starting more off in like a regional airline. So I'm not gonna be landing at any small untowered air, airports. That's not really what I wanna do. So I'm gonna turn this up a bit and then we'll hit next. And congratulations, you're done. We'll hit finish. And that'll take us into our office. 
And all right, Blue Griffin, welcome to my office. New humanitarian aid missions are available. We'll take a look at that here in a second. You have no aircraft in your fleet. Purchase at least one from the marketplace. All right, before we do that, let's go take a look at the menus. So obviously right here, this is the office. There's a lot of click spots on this image. You can click on and get the different areas. I will allow you to explore that yourself. At the top left of your screen, you'll see cargo jobs and passenger routes. We got our, our overview map here. Right now, a lot of the stuff is going to be empty because we don't have an aircraft yet. Uh, but this is going to show us San Diego. It'll also populate all of the jobs that are available in the area from this airport and all, so on. I'm going to skip uh, available jobs. That's where you can find available jobs, your routes, available missions. Here's our humanitarian missions here. We have six of them, uh, mostly over in the UK and Europe area. So it's not really going to apply to us too much. Uh, but those are pretty cool. I'm not sure how much they pay or if they're kind of like just a fun thing to do. Um, I have not yet to do one yet, sadly, but I really would hope that they would add some of those over in the US as well. So I'm gonna close that out. Uh, also the radar here on the top, uh, you can see all of the other players who are also using Air Hauler. I think this is also X-Plane, P3D, and FSX players all over the globe at any time. You can literally sit on the screen and watch other people fly. You won't really know too much of what they're doing. It doesn't give you too much information. There's also a chat here on the right never use that you can also access the air hollow 2 forums at the top of the menu as well moving on company information here you can click on bases here you'll see all your base information your cargo or commodity capacity a lot of customization there uh the fleet page is where we'll see our fleet when we eventually get fleet um let's skip pilots for now info this will show you your cargo passenger mission and overall reputation these are all actually calculated separately or except for overall but you'll get if you do cargo jobs you'll get more cargo reputation if you do passenger you'll do that reputation and it all adds up to your overall reputation you can also change your company logo here if you're wondering how i did that you can do that right here next up finance this will show you your company cash your monthly overhead right now our overhead is twenty four thousand, but we haven't bought anything so that's basically the price of maintaining our base and then we have personal info so you can see it says personal cash so you actually have an account separate from your company your company will have a certain have a bank account and then you have your own bank account this i think mostly applies to when you're doing virtual airline stuff because you can fly for someone else's virtual airline and make money for them but also get money back to you and you can take that money and put it into your airline whether it be your own virtual airline or your single player airline it's up to you it'll also show your type rating on the screen and if you want to add a new type rating you can do that as well and speaking of virtual airlines that's what we got up next in the next tab all of your virtual airline information is here if i click on click on the company info it's going to ask us for our email address which i'm not going to do right now i did that on my other account but you need to actually create uh, a virtual airline in order to even join a virtual airline or see the global job list by other virtual airlines. You can actually create cargo jobs and passenger routes as a virtual airline. Uh, another cool feature is as you buy aircraft, you can actually transfer your single player aircraft to your virtual airline. So you can kind of share them going both ways, which is actually pretty cool. Let's take a look at the factories and construction page. This is actually really interesting to me because you can actually create factories and uh, develop or manufacture different types of goods. So we can go to items here and we'll see, we got building materials, something we can manufacture in a factory. Uh, we got battery packs, plastics, aircraft engines. You can make all that kind of stuff and then sell them. Uh, there will be missions in game that are asking for some of these different types of things and you can either manufacture them or you can go find them from another airport and deliver them to where the mission is asking for that product. So it's a pretty cool thing. Also there's construction where I believe you can like uh, dismantle or I'm not really 100% sure what you can make there. <laughs> I haven't tried that part yet, but I think you can like make a plane. You, I don't know. I think that's what it does. Anyways, Marketplace is up next. This is where you can buy and lease aircraft as well as hire pilots, take out loans. There's also private sales. I believe the private sales are um, like AI generated private sales. I don't think they're real people. I'm not sure if you can buy and sell aircraft from other real people. I'm not sure about that yet. You guys can let me know if, if you do know. But this is where all that is done. Next up, we'll look at management. And here you can actually 
add aircraft so like by default whenever you're trying to go into the marketplace to buy an aircraft aircraft you will only see the default aircraft in your flight sim so if you want to add like a third party add-on like a tolis or a Coronado or a v sky labs or something like that you're gonna have to go to aircraft management and add an aircraft so you can see my list is pretty long because i've already added a ton um this goes across all of your profiles on air hauler and at the same time you can also add or remove airports from your air hauler database so if you add a airport or remove an airport it only adds and removes it for your account not for other people so if you want to start a bush flying airline or charter you could create a grass strip you know and place that some down somewhere so that's where all of that happens next up we go to options and here you can actually change the skins I'm actually not a fan of the UI design, but you know, it is what it is. Also, you can get to the options in Office Designer and the Air Hauler 2 manual. But most importantly, at the moment, let's take a look at the options panel. Now, by default, Air Hauler 2 will actually launch X-Plane for you whenever you're ready to start a flight. Now, if for any reason you don't want Air Hauler to launch X-Plane for you, like me, you need to click on Use Networked Mode. And what that will do is you'll go through all the details in Air Hauler 2 and then it'll tell you to manually open up X-Plane. You'll open up X-Plane and then you'll manually set your time, weight, and balance. Also in your options is the job creation options. You can always go back through here and change that at any time. All right, let's go ahead and save and continue. So we got 33 million in the bank. And my recommendation before buying an aircraft is taking a look at the pilots that are available for hire. So we're gonna go back to the marketplace and we're gonna go to crew. As you can see, as we just started again, I'm at the, I'm using the easy. So, whoa, there's a lot of people in here. What? What? There's a lot of options in here. <laughs> what the heck? That's actually surprising. I've done this before and I had nowhere near this many options. So I know though that I want to fly uh, the Saab 340 and or the ERJ 145. So we need to look and see what, if we have any pilots that can fly those planes. And if not, what planes you know, are, are available for them to fly. So that way we can, you know, maybe buy a different plane. Cause I want to get an AI flight going as well as my own flight going as well. So let's take a look. Uh, let's see, nope. Alex, uh, he can, nope. I don't care about any of those planes. All right, so check this out. So we got Bryce who can fly the ERJ 145 and that's a good sign. That's great. All right, see what else we got. We got another E145 type rated pilot. Um, looking to see if there's any Saab rated pilots in here. Looking for SF-34. So far, I haven't seen any Saab rated pilots. All right, here's our first one, Sebastian Collins for, wow, $11,000. Uh, he is rated for the Saab 340. And then we actually have another one. There we go, Caitlin Hunter, also available for the Saab 340 for $7,000. See if there's anybody else. Um, that's what I'm gonna focus on right now is getting that Saab. And there's another one. We've got a Nicole Todd. And then we, uh, I think that's it. So we have three pilots that can fly that. And I think we had a one or two pilots who can fly E145, which is gonna be my personal plane. So we've kind of, I've already kind of have a plan in mind before I'm even hiring anybody. Another thing to note, especially if you're starting with a bigger plane, some aircraft will require two pilots in the cockpit, like the Saab 340. So I'm gonna hire two pilots. I'm gonna start with Caitlin. Uh, I think she said she could fly. Yeah, she can fly it. She's only $7,000. So I'm going to hire her. It'll be our first. It says Caitlin is partial to a bit of paintball and has a strong affinity for meeting new people. That's great. So hire a new pilot for $7,000 per month. It's not going to come out of your account right now. I think they wait until the end of the month to charge you. So I'm sending her to San Diego and she has joined the Blue Arrow Royal family. Beautiful. All right. And our other pilot will be Sebastian Collins, also type rated in the Saab 340 for 11,000, a bit more than I wanna pay, but I think we'll definitely make that money back pretty easily. I'm gonna go ahead and hit hire pilot, and that'll be our second pilot. Down to San Diego you go. Sebastian, welcome to the Blue Arrow Royal family. All right, now we got two pilots for our Saab 340, which we have still not yet bought. I'm gonna go ahead and go to aircraft, and I'm just gonna reorganize these by cost. And we'll go and look for our Saab. Here it is. Costs just under $4 million. 50 seats. 5,600 is the cargo capacity. And the range is 1,200. So we'll go ahead and buy that aircraft. It should send it to uh, the company. You could also buy it for your personal use. I'm not really sure 
how that works, but you could buy, I'm buying it for the company. We're gonna do cargo configuration for this plane and we'll use that and send it to San Diego. Purchase complete, beautiful. All right, as you can see, it says you do not have a type rating for this aircraft. Uh, would you like to take the test now? I'm gonna say no. So if you say yes right here, uh, if you did not choose networked mode, um, it'll open up X-Plane for you, I believe in the Saab or whatever plane you chose and you can go and do your type rating test. We're gonna do a flight later on to show you the process of, of getting from Air Hauler 2 to uh, a flight um, with network mode on. Um, right now I'm gonna skip the test because I don't plan on flying a Saab. This is really mainly for the AI at this moment. So I'm hit no. And I also do need a plane for me because I do want to do a flight for my own later on. And I want to fly the E-145 by X-Craft. So here it is. It costs $8 million. We could lease it for $1 million. Again, I mentioned earlier, you can only lease aircraft above 40% reputation. So my, I guess, template started us at 60% uh, reputation. So we're good to go. But if you're starting below that, remember, you cannot lease until you get to 40%. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that aircraft. I'm going to hit yes. I've already did my type rating on my other account. It's uh, universal. We'll do passenger seats this time. We're going to send it to San Diego. Purchase complete. Now it's going to ask us for our seating configuration. If you're in a bigger aircraft, you can actually split this up between first class, business, premium, blah, blah, blah. Uh, obviously, a plane like this is only going to have economy. So we're going to set all 50 of our seats to economy. That means whenever we do fly, it's going to be about eight minutes for the boarding time. And I'm going to hit OK, change configuration. And that should be done. So now if I go over to our company information and then fleet, uh, we will now see that we have two aircraft in San Diego. We have a Saab 340 in the cargo configuration and an E145 in the passenger configuration. And they're both idle condition is 100%. So let's go ahead and get our AI pilots moving uh, before we start our flight. So now that we go back to cargo jobs and passenger routes, we can click on the overview map again. And now we see we actually have some jobs being generated. So I'm actually gonna click on available jobs. I think that's the same thing, just a smaller option here. We can see less at the same time. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna adjust this and filter it by weight. Can I do that? Yeah, quantity, which is basically the weight, I think. And again, 10,000 is where we're at with our SOP. Uh, there's a 348 pounds of glass. That pays us about $35,000. Uh, obviously too heavy for us. I'm going to go down a little bit. Some DVD players uh, going out to uh, DPG. Not sure what airport that is. Michael Dugway Air Force Base. Got some television. Televisions going to, uh, around the Phoenix area. That's a pretty nice flight. Wow, 88. Wow, $88,000. That is, that is a good one right there. I'm definitely taking that one. Wow. That's a short flight. It's only 246 miles. And yes, we'll take that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit accept job televisions to GYR. I'm hit yes. All right, now before we get the AI going, I wanna do something really fun just as a side note. Let's go back to company information, pilots and ops. You can see we got Caitlin Hunter and Sebastian Collins here. Now, you can actually, once you hire a pilot, you can rename that pilot. So I'm gonna rename this guy, Dwayne The Rock <laughs> Johnson. And then, okay, and I'm gonna rename Caitlin as my favorite singer, Shakira. <laughs> Shakira. <laughs> but I thought it'd be cool as well, guys, uh, to actually name my pilots after subscribers to YouTube. So if you guys are watching this video, please leave a first and last name in the comments. And I will put your name as one of my Blue Arrow pilots. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I'll probably be doing that as long as I'm using Air Hauler. I'll use your names uh, and make things a bit more interesting. But anyways, that's just a side note. Let's go back to our accepted jobs under cargo jobs. So accepted jobs, we got our televisions ready to go. I'm gonna hit assign to AI here on the bottom. And now we're gonna choose our Saab 340. We hit okay. We got Shakira and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I'm not sure what universe that would ever happen, but we're gonna hit okay. We'll, we're gonna make uh, The Rock, we'll make The Rock our captain and we'll make Shakira our co-pilot. It just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. All right, so now we've assigned them, them to the job. If we go to our, uh, I believe if we go to our fleet, um, eventually it will say loading cargo. I think it takes a, like a minute or so for it to get going, but Okay, now the AI is set up to do what they do. Now it's time to do what we do. You can see right there it says cargo loading. And what we do is passengers. So we're gonna set up our own passenger route. 
So back up to the top menu, you see it has routes and ad hoc flights. So routes, the difference between routes and ad hoc routes is routes is if you want to create specific routes at specific times. So you could say, I want to fly from San Diego to Phoenix every Tuesday at eight o'clock in the morning. That would be something you would put under routes. Now ad hoc route is way more flexible and that's what we're doing today. I'm not sure what ad hoc means, but basically you get to fly your plane now from where you are now. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so we're gonna select our ERJ. We're gonna hit okay. This aircraft will be departing from San Diego. Choose your destination. So we're gonna do a super short flight just to show you how this works. Palm Springs is where we're headed today, super short, 74 miles. You can see, you also see the landing fee here, it's 2,437. You also get some more information about that airport, like the monthly rental if you were to open a base there, and the opening fee if you were to open a base. So 520,000 would be how much it costs. Something to pay attention to as you're flying to different places to get an idea of maybe where you would like to open a new base in the future. So you selected, now it's gonna open up our info screen so here's our ticket prices on the left we have our operating cost here on the top right and our max available passengers on the bottom right so we're gonna go back to the ticket pricing and you see right now it says zero zero tickets sold that's because our price is too high this route is very short and i guess passengers don't want to pay that much to do it they don't see the value in blue arrow yet we're brand new on the market oh look at this 20 passengers let's see i gotta find a sweet spot where you can make the most money and sell the most tickets. So, wow, so if I go down, geez, if I go down to, if I go down to $22, I'll fill the seats, but I'll only make a hundred thousand. Oh, I'll make, <laughs> I'll make a thousand dollars. If I go down to, let's see. I'm getting close. Like about, $41, I can get about 38 total passengers for about 1500 You know what I mean? So you got to find a sweet spot. As your reputation increases, uh, you will be able to sell tickets for more and put more butts in the seats. So we're not going to do any purchase service. It's a short flight. No reason to. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the top right now, our departure time and arrival time. These are very, very important. So right now it says May 26th at 1805 is the departure time. So note that time, 1805. FS start time, that'll be 15 minutes before 1805. Basically, I think if you're using uh, air hauler to open up your X-plane, it should spawn you an X-plane 15 minutes before this time. It means before boarding time and all that stuff. Now we'll be doing it manually. That's why it's more important for us to pay attention to what this time is because I need to make sure that I set my time to the correct time. So it'll be like 1750 or so. So I'm gonna hit fly now. And now you can see this is our cargo loading page. If we were doing a cargo pay, uh, cargo flight, we would see the available cargo on the left column and we could load it over to the right column, which will be in the plane. Uh, above that, you can see uh, 38 passengers, a total of 69, uh, 14 pounds. And then our fuel loaded on the bottom, which for some reason is showing as 100 LL, which I don't think an ERJ would run that type of fuel, but you know, who cares? Right now our estimated range is 494 miles, which is nowhere near as much as we need. Actually, no, that's plenty. Right now our estimated range is 494 miles, which is actually plenty of fuel to make it to Palm Springs. Um, but I'm gonna add a little bit more because we don't know if we're gonna come right back to, to uh, San Diego. We get a better deal on fuel at our home base than we would anywhere else. Just get a little bit more. Sometimes in some of the add-on aircrafts, the fuel flow rate um, in air hauler is not completely correct. So you might wanna bring a little extra fuel just in case it's not calculating it correctly. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. We hit okay on the bottom. That's all we need to do on this screen. We purchased 572 pounds of fuel for $451. Hit okay. Next up, uh, we're only gonna go like 11,000 feet today. I mean, it's probably higher than we need to go. We technically can be flying VFR. But I'm going to leave it as IFR for now. And you could actually put in a whole flight plan here if you want it. You can click on VORs, and NDBs, and airways. Um, actually, those are waypoints. And you could actually click on these and add them to your flight plan. And I believe there's a way to import that into your FMC on X-Plane. We're, we're just going to do direct today. We're not going to worry about that. Um, you can flight plan in whatever way you decide to. I'm going to hit accept route and fly. So now it's saying start X plane 11 again. So if you don't have network mode on, at that point, air hauler would have already launched your X plane sim. But since we have network mode on and I want to start it up manually, 
it's telling us to start it. And when we do start it, we need to load our cargo manually at these exact numbers. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, let's start with cargo. So go to weight and balance. Our payload weight is 70, 84, enter. And our fuel is 32, 81, enter. So you can see we have about an hour of fuel and that is exactly the settings that Air Hauler 2 told us. We have to put that in manually. I'm hit done. And then our next step, and the most important step, especially if you're doing passenger jobs, is the time of day. So we need to be about 1750. So I'm gonna scroll this until we get to 1750 or close to it. It doesn't have to be exact. We'll do 52. And another thing, and this is gonna probably happen to you, make sure that your sim is on the correct day. So Air Hauler wants us to be on the 26th of May. I'm gonna customize, you can see we are on the 26th. A lot of times, if you're offset from uh, GMT, uh, there may be times where x is actually reporting you to be 25 instead of 26. So you gotta be careful with that. Make sure that this day is the right day of the year. So don't use track real world time because that will not work. Apply changes. All right now we are in x -Plane in our ERJ E145 using the United livery for now because I don't have mine uh, finished yet. And we're at the right uh, time of day. I have the engines already started just to kind of for the sake of time. I got everything ready already. So I'm going to go back over to Air Hauler and I'm going to hit OK right here. And then we're going to get greeted with a, another screen. So it has our x connection status receiving green light. So you make sure this light is green or you're not going to be actually tracking your flight. If we go over here to our in-flight message log, uh, it'll show us that we have three minutes of boarding. Uh, passengers boarded right now at 21 out of 38 so far. And that's going to keep updating until it finishes loading all the passengers. It'll take us three minutes to do that. After that, most likely it'll be about 10 minutes until we are scheduled for our wheels up. And back in the sim, you'll also see the same information here on the left. We see I have our air hauler screen it says boarding in progress, three minutes. Passengers boarded so far, 25 out of 38. Now, obviously, you would usually not board passengers on the freaking runway. But again, for the sake of time, <laughs> you know. All right, just two more minutes of boarding. I'll see you guys right before we take off. All right, the announcements are complete. The boarding process is finished and now says that we are nine minutes until scheduled departure slot. Now, we can take off right now and I believe we won't really be penalized. I think it's only if you depart late uh, will you be uh, actual penalized towards your scores. So we're gonna go ahead and roll off right now. Aircraft is already ready to go. We're gonna head out to Palm Springs as I release the parking brake and give it some power. We are now rolling on the runway out of San Diego. And there it is. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. In route, fly to sector and land at your destination. Departure was on time. So you can see there, even though we left nine minutes early, um, it still says that we're on time. So that's definitely a positive. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll out of here. Beautiful day. Beautiful departure out of San Diego. All right, approaching the beautiful Palm Springs area, I do have the controls. And I also wanna mention just a couple more things. Uh, for one, whenever you're flying a job yourself, it seems that the uh, multi-crew requirement is uh is is not a thing like for example if i wanted the ai to do this route i would have to have two pilots uh to do this but i can do it on my own by myself so that's one interesting fact the other you got to make sure you be careful uh not to bank or climb or descend too steep um, or the passengers will be very upset at you you'll also get uh passenger updates throughout the flight so be careful with your speed brakes and things like that and uh, we are coming in a little bit hot it's kind of in a rush to get here, but the gear is coming down, air brakes are out, or I should say the speed brakes are out, and I have our runway in sight right ahead in the Palm Springs. So hopefully we can get a nice smooth landing, because if we don't, then no matter how smooth we fly, the passengers will, be, will walk away with sore bottoms. All right, here we come. Go, we're down a greaser I like that 29 minutes early all right taxi and park 
All right, reverse is green. Manual braking. We'll see if we can make this exit right here. It's to the left. Beautiful. All right, I'm just going to park it right here. And then we'll head back to air hauler. So I'm going to hit the park and brake, shut the engines off. And we should get a notification. There it is. Disembarking passengers. Close, explain, alt tab, back to complete flight. We'll do. All right, we're back in air hauler now. You can see passenger flight completed. Income, $1,558. Passenger satisfaction, 95 Pretty darn good for our first flight. Passengers disembark, close X-Plane and return to air hall to unload any additional cargo. Now you don't actually have to close X-Plane, that's not necessary. Hit okay right here. And you wanna check out this screen, this will tell you it's basically your entire log of your entire flight of all the updates that they gave you. You can click on finish flight monitoring and see results. And you can see flight time was 23, landing performance was a greaser. The type of uh, runway was concrete. And then over here on, on the uh, in the log box, you'll see just a bit more information there. If you land hard, uh, you will damage your aircraft and it'll it'll hurt the, um, I guess the overall performance and whatnot. So we go ahead and hit okay, finish monitoring. And then to see uh, basically a log of what all like went on, you can go to company information, then you can go to finance and then you'll see a finance overview. Uh, but we wanna look at the ledger. The ledger will show us um, exactly what it costs. So you see we paid uh, that was the cost for the aircraft. Here is the fuel, 451. Landing fees, 1,218 at Palm Springs. And then, oh, wait a second, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, and then apparently, what did we get charged? Landing fees twice? Landing fee at Palm Springs. And we a bit, a, apparently there's a departing fee out of San Diego too. So we paid two fees there. And then we didn't really didn't make any profit on that. <laughs> As you can see, we made 1,500 and we paid a lot more in fees so you definitely want to be smarter with the flights that you choose uh, another way to get another look at what all happened go to info page and uh, reputation log here next to reputation gra graph you'll see that we had 60.0 was our reputation and you can see our overall rep now is 60.32 and we gained uh, almost a whole point of passenger rep here after that one flight so you can see how much what the progress is there. So if we were doing GA, if like we started in career mode, uh, it would take quite a while, uh, quite a lot of flights to get from 20% to 40%. And you'd have to fly like perfectly every single flight um, to get there in any amount of time. You might get less. I'm not sure if this is judged by the mile, by the cargo, who knows? I'm not sure what the algorithm is there, but that's what that is. And yes, we have completed our first flight guys. And if we go back to our, I think our overview map. We should see that we have a plane. I'm going to hide some of this stuff. Um, we have a plane now flying the South 340 <laughs> driven by Dwayne the Rock heading over to Phoenix now. And so it's going to take him a while. I, th I don't know how long that flight's going to be. All right. So I'll go back to the fleet page. I can actually see the status. Uh, Dwayne the Rock and Shakira flying the uh, South 340 to Phoenix and it says in route and it'll take them about two hours and 11 minutes That's real time So I could go out and do like multiple flights while they're doing that flight Or I could go hire more pilots and have them do more flights more legs and uh, later on Maybe we'll talk about how to set up passenger routes to get AI just going 24 7 But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that and uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying air hauler too uh, I've been liking it. I've been it's really piqued my interest. So I'm going to be digging into it even deeper. We can talk more about factories, virtual airlines, uh, all kind of stuff, passenger routes, all that. But uh, speaking of virtual airlines, I did start one. I have not added any aircraft to it yet. Hopefully I'll have some by the time this video comes out. But uh, check out Blue Arrow Global in the uh, virtual airline tab. And I'll see if you guys can find me. Maybe you want to help me make some money there. But uh, anyways, guys, until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, or give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I will see you guys next time, next video. Send me any questions if you have it. And don't forget to send me your names. And I'll add you as a pilot for the Blue Arrow Royal family. I'm out. Peace. Peace.